Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. I would like to buy a book of stamps and $25 in Bitcoin. Can you imagine a day when you walk into the post office and you buy a book of stamps after standing in line for a couple of minutes when you get up to the clerk and you tell them, with that book of stamps, let me also get $25 in Bitcoin. What if it was that easy to purchase Bitcoin? You could walk into maybe a 7-Eleven and buy $25 in Bitcoin. Or you're going into your pharmacy and you're buying some prescription or just some vitamins or something else that you needed. Maybe you're stopping by to buy some milk before you go home at the pharmacy. And <clears throat> while you're standing there checking out, you go, you know what? I need to buy some more Bitcoin. Here's 25 bucks. Give me $25 in Bitcoin. Imagine a world where purchasing Bitcoin is that easy. Oh, wait a minute. You don't have to imagine. That world is already happening. Let's get into it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas that will help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash that like button. Man, it really helps us out. We really appreciate it when you do. I'm not a financial advisor. And this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. And if you're investing in cryptocurrency, be sure to read the rest of this disclaimer. In fact, the truth is this disclaimer is really good advice no matter what you're investing in. You always want to make your investments and do them wisely in a way that you're not risking your financial future. So if you, speaking of risking money and the historical perspective of Bitcoin, if you bought Bitcoin and held it for three years, historically, you wouldn't be able to lose money. You might come really close to breaking even, but in, in the history of Bitcoin today, uh, like for example, if you bought $1,000 of Bitcoin on January 1, 2017 and sold it December 31st, 2019, you would receive $7,206 for your money. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might say, hey, you've repeated this multiple times. I already got it. You know, when I first saw these numbers, I thought I got it immediately too. And then it took me several months before it really sunk in. See, the key here, the, the important lesson, the greatest takeaway that I've gotten out of this is you want to buy and hold Bitcoin for three years or longer. If you're doing it for a shorter period of time, you need something that gives you a significant edge that improves the performance of just simply buying and holding Bitcoin for three years. That's where a lot of people lose money in cryptocurrency is they weren't invested for the long term or they invested in some, one of the altcoins that just ended up not doing very well. You know, uh, a lot of people don't realize there were over 2,000 altcoins. These are coins other than Bitcoin that no longer exist today. And today, right now, there's only about 1,900 altcoins. And so when you're investing in cryptocurrency, you definitely want to be careful. Bitcoin has the best success record of all of them. Uh, over the last 10 years and the longest, of course, since it was the first one. So Australians can now pay for Bitcoin at the post office. This isn't a fantasy. This is something that's actually happened. Uh, if you live in Australia, when you go in and buy yourself a book of stamps, you can actually purchase uh, $25 worth of Bitcoin or whatever dollar amount they will allow you to do right there at the post office. So the firm's CEO, Holger Arrains, I probably didn't say his name correctly, forgive me if I butchered it, explained that he believes the new payment option will make some people more comfortable with buying crypto. For many people, paying for Bitcoin at an Australia post office feels safer than transferring funds online, particularly for first-time buyers. 
We're proud of this partnership and would like to thank Australia Post for their continued openness to new technologies. Now, with this happening in Australia, it increases the likelihood of this spreading throughout the world. You know, people have always said that the key to Bitcoin mass adoption is making it easy for people to purchase Bitcoin. And this is one of those things that really helps to make it easy. But in fact, as time goes on and on, it's becoming easier and easier for the retail and the institutional market to get involved in Bitcoin. I just finished a three-part series called Wealth Transfer uh, Bitcoin and Cryptocurrency. And what we're seeing is a wealth transfer from institutions, from people who have a lot of money, um, and also a wealth transfer from just the retail investors into cryptocurrency. And this whole thing with the Australian post office is another example where retail investors are transferring their wealth into Bitcoin. And the more people that transfer their wealth into Bitcoin, the more it pushes the price up, and the more it pushes the price up, the more uh, your return on investment looks uh, really, really good. In fact, it has the potential of skyrocketing. So look at retail. These are some of the other areas that um, are impacting the ease of use for retail investors to get involved with cryptocurrency. You know, when I first got involved, the only way to get uh, uh, to buy Bitcoin was through exchanges. But over time, we're seeing it happening through software wallets, hardware wallets, different apps that you can download. Even PayPal and Facebook are getting involved in cryptocurrency. And eventually, if you have a PayPal account, you it, it's the rumors are, and it's currently a rumor because it's been confirmed by the firms that are by the businesses that are in in uh, working with PayPal to do this. But PayPal itself has not confirmed this. Uh, but it looks like PayPal will soon allow you to purchase Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies right through your PayPal account. And of course, Facebook's Libra is also coming out. And then we have things like central banks getting involved, governments buy, setting up their own bank digital currencies. These countries, uh, China, Ukraine, Sweden, and Uruguay, are all doing a beta test. They're all currently testing out their own cryptocurrencies. And then, of course, there's always the brick and mortar. There's over 8,345 ATMs, Bitcoin ATMs, uh, around the world. Those are already in existence. Plus, we just had a recent announcement of over 20,000 different stores from 7-Eleven to CVS and Rite Aid, all working on a program to accept Bitcoin, to sell and buy Bitcoin right from the the counter, just like we're seeing with the Australian Post. And so when it comes to retail, we can see this great big infrastructure. Think of it as a uh, high-speed highway is getting built, making it easier and easier for people to purchase cryptocurrency. And the easier it is for them to buy Bitcoin, the more buy Bitcoin they'll actually buy. So in conclusion, how can I be of service to you? Uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, please leave them in the comment section below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.